Hey, everybody. What's up? I hope you guys are crushing it wherever you are in the world today. Hey, you know what? I get a lot of emails, emails from the show over the years, and um, you know, I, I could, I could, I could sort of bracket them and bucket them in certain ways. And I can tell you that the vast majority of the emails I get um, are either one, "Hey, Toby, I don't know whether to join team or not, or which brokerage to join." Right? I get those kind of questions. Um, but, but people who actually have businesses, it's always sort of saying I'm stuck at a certain level. I'm stuck at 12 deals a year or, or 30 deals a year. And, uh, you know, how do I get more leads? And they think that, that, you know, so many people think that the answer to their problems is in terms of leads. And obviously that's not true. And I, it's a long, I can go talk for an hour about the difference of lead quality, but I'm, that's not what this episode is about. This episode is about how we can get better at our jobs by learning people skills. And 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 in the, today's guest wouldn't call it people skills, but but I'm going to. You know, a lot of people will go to let's say uh, sales classes or seminars on how to close a deal or how to better persuade your prospect. But the problem with these kinds of approaches, and, and frankly, with with a lot of coaching approaches, that they kind of approach every person interaction environment with the same script, the same approach, the same sort of tempo, and um, and and for that sort of individual who has the same process every time. Um, then it is about lead generation because then it all is become – it's just numbers game, right? You're only so good. You can only adapt so much and the numbers, you just do more and you'll more will kick out, right? Get more leads at the top of the funnel and more will kick out if you just keep – putting in the work. And that's true. But, but, you know, for me, you know, I want to optimize the whole process. And today's guest is, she's a best-selling author and she's an expert personality profiler. Now, why this is critical in terms of getting more conversions, being a better communicator, being a better persuader, um, That's exciting stuff to me anyway. I've always been fascinated by it. And we talk a little bit about personality profiles. If you guys don't know much about the disc profile and and other type Myers-Briggs, you know, different type of personality profile tests, Um, we chat about why it's important to know your profile and why it's critical that you learn the tools to, to find out what personality profile you're dealing with. In a situation, whether that's on a sales call or with your wife or with your kid's teacher or with a crazy person at in the grocery store line. Now, I, I uh, <laughs> you know, I think I, I will tell you, man, you know, I've spent a lot of time focusing on this and uh, I can always learn more. And I actually learned some things from today's guest's approach. She has a pretty unique approach, one that I've not not really seen or or explored that much before. So I hope you love and enjoy this episode as much as I did. Before we get to the episode, let me tell you or share with you that there's nothing like the power of traditional media right now, like radio and television, right? All the campaigns are, are, and even last series, you know, Everybody spends more money on radio and television than they do online. And there's a reason for that. There's a reason why I forget I forget Trump's budget, but it was massive. That's where he focused on. And and I will tell you that when it comes to agents out there that are killing it, and when I say killing, I'm just talking about 300 deals plus a year, right? Every single one of those are on radio. I think I've met in 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 the last decade maybe two or three people who've cracked 350 without radio. Um, and they have some other kind of secret sauce, but but radio scales better than anything online when it comes to getting listing leads. There's nothing close. You know, you want cheap buyer leads? No problems. Go buy Facebook ads. You want come list me calls? Do radio. The leader in radio for real estate agents is my radio expert. They'll find you the right station, negotiate the best deals. If you want to know more, go to MyRadioExpert.com, fill out the Getting Started sheet, or if you're serious about ending this year off strong, send me an email to SuperAgentsLive at gmail.com. Now look, this is a tough environment for everybody, but the agents that have the advantage in this market are the ones that have built their businesses in the cloud, the ones that are not tied down to a location or even a geography. There's no better broker than eXp Realtor. They offer the best splits, 
the most comprehensive tool set, all built in the cloud, and the most training, which matters if you're looking to grow your business. And to top it off, their revenue sharing model is the only one of its kind in the industry. And agents are making an extra three to five grand a month just by sharing their stories with the people in their market. If you want to know more, you can give me a call directly. My cell number is 619-301-0823. That's 619-301-0823. Let's get to this fantastic episode. Welcome to Super Agents Live. This is the one place where you can come and hear the most successful people in real estate. You'll hear how these super agents have built their businesses, how they stay productive, and how they stay motivated. Who am I? My name's Toby Salgado, and I made my first million in real estate. Yeah. And I'm your host for the next 30 minutes while we talk to yet another amazing real estate yeah. entrepreneur. Stay tuned. Let's go. Yeah. yeah. Today's guest is an expert personality profile. She's a certified human behavior consultant, award-winning author, and creator of a children's book called The Four Pals. Her latest book, Stop Squatting With Your Spurs On, uh, is designed to help you identify different personality types by spelling out their differences and giving you the tips needed to become bilingual in personalities. I'm thrilled to welcome Angel Tucker. Angel, thanks for taking the time. Thank you, Toby. Appreciate it. Of course. Okay. Hey, so take a minute and for the people who don't know who you are and uh, share with everybody um, a little bit about your background and then we'll talk to, uh, you know, about how and why you wrote this book. Okay, awesome. So I've been an expert personality profiler for almost three decades, and I've also been in real estate for that long. So previously, I sold real estate in Florida. That's where my license still is and and known for doing 100 transactions a year, working 20, 25 hours a week. And I'm able to do that because I understand people uh, to the level that we're going to talk about today. So I'm excited about that. Awesome. So, I mean, so I, I didn't, I wasn't aware of that, by the way. I didn't know that you were doing a hundred <laughs> deals a year. Um, that's super compelling. I mean, so, so did you, all the stuff that you learned and why you wrote this book, I mean, is that something you picked up and learned along the way to, to get, you know, along your path, building a business, doing a hundred deals? Absolutely. Yeah. A lot of what I, even though I'm certified to do what I do, uh, in, which is a specialized training, but a lot of what I know is really on the job training, right? Like mm-hmm. most of us learn as real estate professionals. And so I wanted to create something, even though the book is really for everyone, even people not in our industry, it's kind of your Bible for communication. So it's something you'll read once and you'll go back and refer to it forever. And in fact, I have spoken actually at the California. California Association of Realtors a state convention. So it's possible that some of your listeners have even uh, seen me there speaking. That's fantastic. All right. So, you know, I think, I think understanding your personality profile is super important in terms of like really just understanding how to build your team and how to build your business and whether you should even build a team or join a team. Not so, so there's lots of different personality tests out there. And the one that, that we use the most is DISC. Um, and I think that's the one you you are an expert in. Um, for the people who don't know their personality profile or DISC, can you can you share a little bit about what DISC is and maybe why people really should know what their personality <laughs> profile is? Yes, absolutely. And it's amazing to me, Toby, how many, not even just realtors, but entrepreneurs in general are out there running their business by default because they don't understand people. And so it's so important to have a model of human behavior that you use and we do use DISC because it's the simplest model to understand and then to, to talk to someone about for a few minutes in a way that they can actually then tell someone else about it. So let's break it down real quick for those that may not be familiar with it. So DISC is actually uh, the letters. Each letter stands for a different personality type. So you have your D, which is your dominant personality type. This is about 10% of the population. Uh, and that's surprising to all the Ds out there because they surround themselves by other Ds. And so uh, they think there's more of them than there really are. But these are the ones, if you ever heard someone say, oh, I'm a type A personality. 
in our system, we would call that a D or a dominant personality. So this is someone that is outgoing and they're task oriented. So they're motivated and energized by getting stuff done. Uh, they're very bottom line communicators. They don't want to know a lot of extra stuff. Just tell me what I need to know right now. And uh, so as you can imagine, they're very um, productive. In fact, they're more productive than any other personality type. Now, with each personality, of course, comes a challenge. So the challenge with this personality is they can be very impatient and they can very be very unemotional or unfeeling. So that's something to keep in mind if you happen to be this personality. And that's what I love about this is just an understanding of ourselves better, right? By, by knowing the DISC model. So that's the D. That's the first one. The I is inspiring. This is the person that lights up the room just by walking in. This is the person that gets along with everyone. They're great conversation starters. They interact well with others. They are also bottom line communicators, but they are not interested in getting stuff done. They're interested in being with people. So that's the I personality. Their downsides are they're forgetful in nature and they have a lot of unfinished stuff going on in their life. They're great starters and they get bored very easily and they got a lot of unfinished stuff happening. So the S, this is your supportive personality. This is your Mother Teresa, your Kumbaya, your peacemaker. Very, very personable, great at building relationships. Their challenge is they're easily intimidated and they have trouble making decisions. Uh, not bottom line. This is the personality that wants lots of details and information, but they also want you to make it very easy for them to understand understand what you're communicating to them. And then the last one is the C. This is your cautious, four-level, analytical, deep thinking personality. Also, uh, A to Z, what we call information gatherers, but they actually want you to make it complex. The more complex, the better. They love dissecting information. <laughs> this personality uh, is, is has trouble changing on a dime. They don't do well with change unless they're prepared for what's going to happen. And they also can be very critical if they're not careful. So that's a few downsides of that personality. So that's just a little overview of what we're dealing with here. Yeah, no, that's great. And I, and I think, you know, when, when, so for me, like the, the, when you take a disc profile test, it will kind of rank you on, on, on all these metrics, right? DISC, and it'll give you sort of a, um, I, I can tell you, I've taken the disc profile multiple times and I'm 99 D 99 I, right? Uh -huh, so so uh -huh. like for me, like I hate, the same. <laughs> I hate details, right? Let's get to it. You know? Yeah. Uh, yep. And, and, uh, and the, it, and what I've learned. Okay. Well, I, I'll tell you later about what I've learned. So, so where, so, okay. So hopefully everybody should know, or, or at this point want to know their own personality profile. Where can they go? I, I know where I send people to get a free disc test. Is there any place that you a link or uh, maybe you have a, a test on your site. So there's a couple of things that you can do. And, and what we, what we like to do, Toby, is instead of calling it a test, which some people hear that word and already start to experience anxiety because they think there's a pass and a fail. So we like to use the word assess. Okay. <laughs> that That's way, great. That's a better it word. It kind of makes it a little easier because there's no right or wrong, right? There's there's great in all of these letters. And the reality is we actually are all four of these, okay? Right. So just like yourself, I'm a DI, almost even in those two. But there's still a tiny bit of S and a tiny bit of C that is in there. So 80% of the population is dominant in two of those four. So just like you name two letters and I name two letters, that's about 80% of the population. So to answer your question on where, where do you get these assessments? There's a couple different options that you can do that we offer. One is if you download my app, which of course is free, it's Personality Profiles LLC. It's a black background with, with angel wings on there. If you download that, you can click at the bottom. It'll read free assessment. You you can do a free what we call mini assessment. Okay, it won't give you a report. It won't tell you anything about you specifically. It'll just give you these letters that we're talking about. What's your top one or two letters? Now, if you want to get more in depth, what we recommend doing is going to our website. And for as little as $12.95, you can actually take an assessment that gives you an actual report on yourself, which is value added, right? So it's, it's uh, personality profiles, 
dot org. So you want to make sure you put that S in there, personalityprofiles.org. And you click on our store and you'll see the the variety of assessments. And what's super cool is we can even do these on children, right? And so imagine if a teacher understood how your child learns. Imagine how much conflict that could eliminate and stress right there by understanding that not all children learn the same, right? And so you can do an assessment even on your children. They don't even have to know how to read. We use cartoons. And so those are valuable as well. For sure. Yeah. And, and, and just let me throw one more in there because this is where I, I send people uh, angel and, you know, and again, this is, everybody should just, they can go to your stuff or here, but I go to Tony Robbins.com. So, so for everybody, the one that I go to is Tony Robbins.com slash disc D I S C. Now, check on that because Tony's, as far as I know, his is not free anymore. I don't know when you went on there last, but his is, he was starting to charge for those. He did um, have a free one for years. Yeah. Let me see. I'm on it right now. Take a second. Oh, good. See if it'll still let you do that. Because I know a lot of people that use that as well, but I was told by numerous people that he's now charging for those. It doesn't, it doesn't look like it right now. I mean, I, oh, good. so yeah. So any, it, whatever people can, if they have to pay for it, that's fine. But at least they have a few different places where they can go and take a look at it. Okay. So, so why is it important? I mean, let's talk about us individually first. Like why, you know, why do you think it's important for me to know my, my disc assessment or my kids disc assessment? Like how, how would that benefit me? Right. That's a great question, Toby. And I appreciate you asking that. So, it really gives us a self-realization of our own strengths and challenges by understanding what our dominant letters are. And it also gives us great insight into how we're seen by other people, right? Because we each have different ways that we can be perceived that maybe we don't realize. And the reality is that however someone perceives you will also affect the way they receive you. Okay. And so, you know, for example, a D can be perceived as pushy and overbearing, and it doesn't mean that they are, but it doesn't even matter whether you are. All that matters is that someone thinks you are. Does that make sense? And so that's going to affect the way that they interact with you. So it's important to have that kind of perspective of how are we seen by other people, because that is going to affect our interaction with them. So that's what's important about understanding Ourself, so that's the answer to part one of your question. Sure, and 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 I guess the idea is see see here's the thing with my personality, and and I don't know if it's the same with you, but you know, so I'm the guy who walks in the room and I sort of make things happen, right? I don't mean to, it just it just sort of bubbles up around me, and and my sense is right, like I meet a lot of S's and C's, right, um, around and and. You know, I'm I'm obviously not stimulated by those people. They're 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 generally pretty boring to me. Um, but my sense is, is that that I you know I feel like everybody wants to be me, right? Like everybody wants to have my personality. They want to be able to do the things that I do, and um, and and I'm always shocked when when I meet someone who is maybe like a high C. And they get freaked out by me. They're like, this guy, what, what, who is this guy? Right. Is he, you know, my energy, right? Like, is this guy in Coke or like what, you know, what's happening here? And, and, you know, I forget to dial it back. I, I know, I mean, I literally can be in the moment. I go, I, okay, this person is a C. I totally get it. I need to dial myself back, but I, I, I can't sometimes I just get carried away. <laughs> Yeah, it does. You know, it's something, Toby, that we have to do consciously, right? It's not something that's going to ever come naturally to you. So step one is to realize that you need to do it. And then step two is to make that conscious effort to communicate with them the way that they need you to. And that's really what my book is all about is becoming multilingual and personality types, because the way that I talk to you, very bottom line, and if I'm speaking to you, the second I stop speaking, you're going to give me a response, where if I'm dealing with an S or a C, they will pause. Yeah. They will not give me an immediate response because they're still processing what I said, where you're processing it as I say it. Right. They're processing it after I'm done saying it. And so it's important to understand that. Here's where we make a huge mistake in sales, Toby, is that S's and C's are the most loyal customers you'll ever have, but they're also the hardest for D's and I's to get because they don't buy and sell like you do. Right. And so we make the mistake of thinking they're not serious buyers or sellers when they're the most loyal you can ever have. You just have to understand how to get them in the first place. And you know what I do? You know, the mistake that I make is, is so let's say that I'm, I'm at a listing presentation. I don't sell real estate, but let's say I'm, I'm at a sales meeting and I do my thing, right? I do my pitch. 
and I go, hey, right? Like in SNC, as you said, we'll let it sit, right? They'll let, they'll let the everything sort of pause. And the way that I take that, depending on how much coffee I had and how good I feel that day, I go, oh, this person doesn't have enough information. Let me drop, the, let me give them some more. And, and, and <laughs> where I, this is, this is a, like, this is my whole life, man. I, you know, and what I end up doing is I start to, I start to sort of overwhelm them with with because I know they want more, but but my take, but their I take their silence as they don't understand, and then I go boom, and I and I throw them this, and then I throw them that, and then all of a sudden, twenty minutes later, they're super confused because I didn't give them enough room to breathe. Right, right. And a great way to start with an S or a C, and we have ways to know what personality we're dealing with before we even go in and meet with them, is to let them know up front, hey, I'm here to take as much time as you need to answer any questions that you have. And so if you acknowledge that up front, it puts them at ease to know, hey, I'm going to get an opportunity to ask questions and get clarification mm-hmm. and feel comfortable with what's going on. Because it's important to understand that they're not motivated by status and prestige. They're not motivated by having the latest and the greatest and the newest. They're motivated by safety and security. And so if you go in and you're talking about, oh, you're going to, you know, your neighbors are going to be so jealous when you sell your house this fast, or your friends are going to be so jealous pulling up into the driveway of this mansion or whatever, you're not connecting with them to begin with. So you have to start where they are, right? And you have to let them know up front, hey, I'm happy to take as much time as you need answering your questions and then that's going to start you off on a on a going down the right road to creating what we call a win-win situation so nothing i teach is about being fake or about changing who you are Mm. it's simply about understanding how to communicate with different personalities to get the result that you want that's really what it's about so 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 we've talked about this from the angle of you or i right a a dear i and i you know i have a lot to say and i'm you know i'm going to go in and say it yeah. Um, and, uh, and, you know, pitching an S I think, the, I think that, you know, one of the challenges, I think, especially in this industry, right. That there are, there's, you know, there's a, not everybody's a D and I, I, I don't know what the, I think you said 10% of people are D's. Yes. Um, so there's not a lot of us out there, um, or there's more of other personalities. Um, you know, can, can a super C uh, or S personality, like, can they even succeed? I know the answer to this, but I'm asking you, like, can they succeed in sales and, you know, in this game of real estate? Now, how do they do it? All right. So, so you're, you're putting your light to fire under me now, I can right? Hear it. I can hear it. <laughs> so D's and I's are natural salespeople. Okay. So when it comes to a natural ability, you're going to be more successful as a D or an I naturally. All right. Now, can an S or a C be successful? Sure. But it takes a whole lot more work for them to be able to adapt to what it takes to be good at sales. So let's talk about those things. Mm -hmm. You have to be multitasked. You have to be able to change on a dime. You have to be comfortable being around people and meeting strangers and, and talking to them. And all of those things go against the natural instincts of an S or a C. Now, where S's do very, very well, particularly if they're an SI, because remember, you have blends of personalities, right? So if you have an SI, an S and an I, they're both people oriented. So they're great with building relationships. This is my husband. My husband is an SI personality type, and he's great with building relationships. So he's more of a soft sell, okay? So he can he can sell, but it takes him longer to get there, if mm-hmm. that makes any yeah. sense. So they can do it, but it's definitely not what comes naturally to them. And quite honestly, it's probably not something they're going to enjoy doing long term. They're more of a service oriented personality type. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And this is this is almost uh, this may be I mean, you're you're the expert at this. Uh, angel, so you you might object to this, but it's almost like I, I've had I, I used to have a sales partner a long time ago, and he was he was sort of a, an IS, and he was great. People love this guy, right? Like, and so he would warm them up, and I yeah, that's good cop, good cop, bad cop, in a little bit, right? He would You're warm them for the kill, and then I come in and I go, hey, all right, we know what's going on. Let's get to let's get to this, and they're like, whoa, 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 and they're like, well, we we really like this guy, and this guy trusts Toby, and Toby's okay. Let's sign it up. I would like literally like we almost couldn't lose. We would 
would walk into a, a living room. Um, Absolutely. Hey, you know what? Use what works for you, right? right? So, And this is great about building teams is to keep in this stuff in mind and to understand. And that's another thing I love about understanding personality types is it will hopefully give us a greater appreciation for people who are different from us. Because let's face it, Toby, you don't have that ability that that S person has. And so we can say, hey, this is not where I'm strong, but it's where they're strong. So let's work our strengths, okay, to get what we need to accomplish done. And so it's important to have, you know, a blend, a mix, you know, if you have a group of I personalities, they're going to have a great time, but, but nothing's going to get done, you know? And so it's important to, to have an appreciation for people who are different from ourselves. And it's also important to understand that things that hurt our feelings or that get on our nerves about other people, we tend to assume they're against us when really it had nothing to do with us in the first place. It was for the other person. Okay. So for example, an I personality is rarely on time. They're horrible time managers. And you think, well, if you cared about me, you would be on time. All right. But it has nothing to do with you. It's an innate challenge that they have based on their personality type and they're not doing it against you. It's just the way that they're wired. So when we have that understanding, it helps us really to eliminate conflict in our life that doesn't necessarily need to be there. Right, right. It's, it's almost like I, I, my wife, I, I, we've been married for 20 years, but I almost wish I would have made her take a disc profile um, so I could understand her better. I still don't. You know, she's, she, yeah, she won't take the disc for some reason. Oh, goodness. And that's, that's another value added of spending a few dollars on our site to do the assessment because let's say you and your spouse both do it or maybe you and someone you're thinking of bringing in on your team or you or your child, you both do one, then we have a way to do what's called an interaction report. And this is where we get an to the free stuff on our site, you can get a 13 page interaction report that says, how is this going to go between me and this other person? What are some challenges that we're probably going to face based on our results? And what are some strategies, some things that we can do to improve that relationship and that interaction? And we can do that absolutely free. So if you're thinking about hiring someone for your team, you know, you we have a motto, hire for life. So the companies that use my disc, disc, uh, materials have less than 1% turnover. Now that's unheard of in real estate, but they have less than 1% turnover, even in the real estate offices that I, that I, uh, you know, work with. And so it gives you greater insight into how is this going to go long-term mm -hmm. based on our different personality blends. And it's a tremendous value added. Well, okay. So, so I look, I think that's super important. And again, this is, this is why I'm really familiar with the disc is, is about building teams. And because I've seen all sorts of different teams, I've coached all sorts of different teams and you know, I'm sure you have too. And have, have you ever walked into a room full of eyes? Have you ever walked to like, you know, like whether it's, they're selling money, they're brokers, like, <laughs> have you ever walked into that room? Well, absolutely. And, and a lot of them, uh, a lot of times are realtors. <laughs> <So> <laughs> Oh, yeah. And so, you know, it's funny because the it's it's so industry driven as to what the dominant personality is, right? So when I train a room full of realtors, it's dominant in D's and I's every time. But when I'm training a room full of, say, admins or school teachers oh, yeah. or counselors, right. you know, sometimes I'm like, okay, we were going to take a break to see if you're still breathing, right? So it's a totally <laughs> different dynamic well, and, than well, it is with the sales. Yeah. And here's why I was bringing that up is because, because you know, I've, I, I've multiple times I've been in rooms full of high functioning, high achieving D's. And they're all, I, I walk into a room full of me and it's fantastic for a little while. But once we start working together, like, th like part, part of like, I want to kill the other person. I want not mur not physically, not violently, but like their numbers, right? I want to murder. I want to be number one and everybody wants to be number one. And we start cannibalizing one another and it's mm -hmm. all in good fun. Nobody gets, nobody gets upset about it, but, but that is not it, like, it's a hostile environment. And, and look, I thrive in that kind of environment, but but, but you throw an S in there, a C in there, they're going to like, they're going to get it eaten alive. And absolutely. And here, here's why I'm bringing that up is because, you know, when I, I think when you build a team, whether it's, whether it's a full sales team or a team with admin, you know, I think you need to be cognizant of, of who the heck you're hiring, man. You can't, you know, if you have three D's on your team, you know, you, you got to be careful, um, you know, uh, well, I mean, maybe you can answer that. I mean, what happens when you have um, too many D's on a team? 
So you definitely want to have a balance, right? And if you have someone that's like you, here's what you have to do. And you even have to do this in a marriage. If I, if I have two D's married to each other, it's fireworks every day unless they figure this out. So what you have to do is you have to decide who's in charge of what and stay in your lane, mm. right? And so if you say this one is in charge of this and that one's in charge of that, then that's it. And you stay in your own lane because if you don't, then you're going to have, you're going to have conflict, right? And of course that's not productive for anyone, but you do want a good blend of people. When I was selling real estate full time, which now I do this full time internationally, when I was selling real estate full time, you know, I'm a high DI and I had my admin were uh, a CD. My transaction coordinator was a C because I knew that's where I lacked. I knew I lacked in that long term organization and I needed that on my team to supplement my weaknesses. But then I can't in turn expect them to think and feel and act like I do. Mm -hmm. Right. And so I have to interact with them the way that they need me to. I can't go in like I could with you, Toby. I could walk into a room with you and say, Toby, I need you to do this and this and this and walk out and not have to worry about whether they get done. But when I'm dealing with a C, I have to st slow down. I have to give them information I don't think is important. And I have to allow time for questions. Because if I don't make, and, and another D might think that's oh. such a waste of time. Why yeah. can't I just tell them three things and walk away? Right. But it's not a waste of time. It's an investment of time, okay? Because they're going to do it, guess what? Not good enough like I would do because Ds and Is just need it to be good enough. Ss and Cs right. will do it perfectly right? They'll spend a lot of extra time to do it just right, right? Yeah. And so there is value there, but I have to see the value. And then we have to talk to each other about, hey, here's my challenges. I'm not a patient person. Mm -hmm. I don't like lots of details. So if you're going to tell me something, give me bullet points, not, mm -hmm. not long proposals, right? right? And we have to have those conversations up front. And we have to do these interaction reports for both of us to read to see how we're going to work together. Very, very important. That's so funny. Well, one of the things I was laughing when you said, you said, I have to give these people all sorts of information I don't think they need. There, there's so many times where I've had people working for me that, that I, yeah, I don't want, like, I want people to do their thing like a bookkeeper, for example, right? I want that person to be super detail oriented, but I also like, I have to resist the urge not to overmanage them. Cause I'm like, don't, well, don't focus on that. Don't worry about that. You don't need to know that right. piece. Just do this piece. That's it. And, and you know, I've driven a lot of people crazy cause they're like, no, no, I need to know that. I'm like, seriously, dude, you don't need to know that. Like there's, you know, <laughs> so let, let's talk about a little bit. Of how, so that's great. Like, I think that's really important in terms of building teams and building the people around you. What, what are, you know, I, I, here's what I can tell you, right? Like some, like, like you, if we just met in the, in a grocery store aisle and we started chatting, it would not take you because you're training this. It would not take you very long to, to go, Oh, I know what this dude's all about. Right. I know this guy's a D I know this guy's an I, right? Like you, I can do it. Right. But mo how, what for the people who are not versed, maybe they don't even know who they are dis disc wise, but like, like what are some tips that, that maybe people can be on the lookout for to identify, Oh, I need to, you know, I'm dealing with an S or I'm, you know, you know what I'm saying? Like how, Go. I, I don't have a good question, but you know exactly what I'm trying to get at. <laughs> Trust me. I know, I know where you yes. want me to go with this. Okay. And, and I, first, let me tell you this. The hardest thing about doing what I do, because I can figure someone out in 60 seconds or less, but I've been doing this three decades. The hardest thing about doing this is paying attention to other people. Because who are we normally focused on? Me. ourselves, right? Yeah. So you have to take the focus off of you and put it on other people because they are constantly giving you signs that say, here's my personality. You just have to know what to look for. So let's talk about some of those things. Okay. Now in real estate and maybe with many other entrepreneurs, the first contact they have with someone is not as often not in person, right? It's where over the phone. So how in the world can we figure out someone's personality over the phone? It's so easy if you know what to look for. So let's talk about what to look for. Okay. The first thing you want to pay attention to is speech patterns. Hmm. Are they speaking quickly or are they speaking slowly? Are they interrupting you? Are they talking over the end of your sentence? Or as soon as I stop talking, they give me a response. Or is it the other spectrum where as soon as I stop talking, there's a moment of pause. There's silence there. OK, so those indicate who you're talking to. So if someone is speaking quickly, it's a D or an I. If someone's talking over the end of my sentence, it's a D or an I. If the second I stop talking, they start talking, it's a D or an I. It's that simple. OK, yeah. so 
now what do I know? I know both of those personalities get bored very easily. Both of those personalities are motivated by status and prestige. And both of those personalities need bottom line information. And so now I know what road to start heading down to create that win-win situation we were talked about earlier, right? Mm -hmm. So let's talk about the opposite spectrum. Let's say there's a pause. Let's say they're speaking slowly. Now, guess what I know? It's not a D or an I. So it must be an S or a C. So how does that help me? Well, now I know I have to do what? Slow down. Mm -hmm. I have to slow down. I can't come on too strong or overbearing. Okay. And so I have to allow time for questions. I have to give them information I don't think is important. And you know all of that just by paying attention to their speech pattern. So it's very, very powerful, but the key is to pay attention. This is a me. This is a, this question's for me, Angel. But but and this is bad. I, I I shouldn't maybe admit this on air. But I I was just listening to you, right? If people talk slowly and and you know, you know what I take that for, and and I need, this is something I need to think about after we get done with this because I when people talk slowly or they want sort all sorts of information, like I tend to think that they're just slow. I tend to think that that right. person's not very yeah. smart. You know right. what I mean? Yes. It, uh, and that's, and that's a mis misperception that a lot of people have. And it's a very costly misperception because it goes back to, well, if they don't buy or sell the way I do, then they must not be, you know, buying or selling. So people assume because they speak slowly that, that maybe they're not as intelligent when the reason they do that is because they want to give you the right answer. They want to give you the best answer answer. So see, D's and I's just spout off the first thing that comes to their head. Right. All right. Where S's and C's are more calculating. They're, they're deeper, they're more critical thinkers. Okay. And so the reason that that pause even exists is because they're processing what you said to them and they're coming up with the co most correct answer they can give you at that moment. Okay. So it doesn't mean that they don't think as well as you do. They think differently mm. than you do. Now, let's go back and talk about an I and how they think, because I think very differently than any other personality. See, a D, if a D hears a problem, okay, or they need to come up with, with their brainstorming, they do all of that in their head, and they do it very rapidly. And then they say the answer that makes the most sense, okay? And all that happens super quick in their head. An I is an audible thinker. So all that stuff that a D did in their head where they're going, no, that won't work. Yeah, that won't work. Yeah, maybe no, none of that won't work. No, here's the best one. Right. Okay. All that that you did in your head and I does out loud. And so what happens is an I says it and then they hear it the same time that everybody else hears it. And so then they process it. So if you've ever been around someone and you're thinking that is the stupidest thing I've ever heard, how could you think that would even work? The reality is they haven't even thought about it yet because they heard it the same time that you did. And so they're audible thinkers. And so it's important to understand how each personality processes information so that we can have a, a greater acceptance of that instead of getting frustrated by that. And, I, and, and here's why I think this is so, so important is because, you know, if D's are 10% of the population and me and my career, right, uh, that's who I obviously interact the best with. I'm ignoring 90% of the population, right? I'm going, yeah, yeah, that that's not serious, right? Like that's that's a super rookie mistake. Absolutely, is it's a very costly mistake. Right, it, you're absolutely right. Yeah, man. And I wonder how many. Now I'm thinking about this I, over my career of forever. You know, I wonder how many people I just came off as like some pushy sales guy when I was actually trying to help them because I was like, you know, oh, there's too much silence here. Let me go again. Is there, you know, my sense is like, like if I was able to slow down or people like me was able or are able to slow down, right, to match my S's, my, my audience, which is an S, let's say, or a C. And, and I mean, are there questions that I can ask without offending people? Because like my, my sense is that I go, I would say something, I'd let it sit in or, or and maybe just say, hey, does that make sense? You know, can we move on to the next point? You know, I don't, I don't know if that's like. You know, it seems condescending to me if I did that, right? Like, but so what you would do, and another mistake that people make is they have to understand where each personality makes their decisions from. Okay. okay. D's make their decisions based on logic, they're thinkers. I's make their decisions based on their emotions, how they feel. 
S's make their decisions based on their emotions, how they feel. Interesting. C's are thinkers. Okay. Okay. So you have two personalities that are thinkers that are logical, and that's where their decision making comes from. And then you have two personalities that are feelers that are emotional beings, and that's where their decision making comes from. So you don't ask the question the same way to all four. You ask the question based on where their decisions come from. So if I'm dealing with a D, I'm not going to say, well, how do you feel about that? Because they're going to say, well, I think. Right. (laughs) So you see what just happened? So they went to where their decision making is. And so why wouldn't I just start there in the first place? So if I'm dealing with a D or a C, I'm going to say, what do you think about that? Okay. And if I'm dealing with an I or an S, I'm going to say, how do you feel about that? And that will get you to the end result faster than you would ever believe just by changing the way that you ask the question. That's fantastic. That is absolutely fantastic. Um, is that what your book is? I, I'm not here to sell your book. I'm happy to have you on. And again, we've been doing, we have a big audience and they're all super loyal. But but is is this like, because that is super valuable. What you just shared with me is is crazy money. Is your book like that? I mean, do you have tons absolutely. of these or is this just Every- a good one we got to on accident? <laughs> it- Every single one of it, every single, it, it actually became a bestseller the same month it was released. Wow. And so, yeah, it is, it is, uh, I've, I've done so many national TV interviews and so forth as a result of that. But it's, it's absolutely, and as I described it, your Bible for communication, it has nuggets like that throughout the entire book. And it is such an easy read because that's another thing about D's and I's are not typically good readers. Like they start reading and their mind starts thinking about five other things and they go, now, what do I just read? And they got to go back to it and read it five more times, but, uh, or they prefer audible, which it is on audible.com by the way, but it's, you'll read it once and you'll refer to it forever. Okay. Let's say I'm an I and I have a C client coming in and I don't remember what they need from me. <laughs> you just go read how to interact with a C and it takes you five minutes and now you're ready for that interaction. Oh you're God. ready to, to create those win-win situations. I actually had an I, I was doing a real estate training one time and she said, she was an I and she had a C client and she said, by the end of the deal, I didn't want the deal. I didn't want the client. I just wanted them to die. That's what she said. Right. Because yes. She didn't understand this stuff. And she thought they were out to make her life miserable. She thought that they would wake up every day and just think of a list of questions. They needed to call her and ask based on her answers to yesterday's questions. And she took it personally. She thought it was against her and it had nothing to do with her. It was for themselves. And this goes back to what we were talking about at the beginning of the show, right? And so it's... It's important to understand what they need from you because here's what happens, Toby. Anytime we're in a selling situation, we interact with the other person the way that we would want to be interacted with if we were the buyer or the seller. Yes. You know, and that's great if you're working with someone that's like you, but it's a 90% chance you're not if you're a D. And so what do you do, right? You have to understand what they need in order to make the decision you want them to make to create that win-win situation. And absolutely all of that is in the book. Yeah. And, and I, I'll, I'll, you mentioned this slightly and, and, and I don't want to derail us, but I can tell you that knowing some of, you know, so the clients that I have, they become long-term clients and, and I love them and everything's great. We communicate the same or not. We don't communicate unless we need to. And, and I've had like, I've had high C clients and they must be, they must be ICs. I, I don't know, but, but they have been the, like, they've taken so much of my life that, that now, like I'm looking what in my career now, right. I go, I don't know if I want, I, I don't want to work with this person because this person just wants to talk and talk and talk. And, and I'm like, you know, you know what I mean? Like I want forward progress and I, I don't like having three follow-up conversations, you know, everything you need to know. Right. And, 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 and again, like, having a relationship even for a few months with a person that communicates completely different than me. And I'm giving them information that I, as you mentioned a few times that I don't think they need, like I'll do it for a little bit. And then I just, and I have no patience, right? Like, that's maybe my D in me, but I'm like, I'm done. I'll go somewhere well, else. And you bring up such a valuable point, And that is, and I tell people don't feel like you have to work with every personality. Here's the deal. If you know you're not a good fit for that client and you still choose to work with them, it is no longer about them and that's completely about you. That's about you getting paid. It's not about providing the best service to that person. If you know you're not a good fit for them and you still choose to work with them, that is a bad ethical decision on your part. So what do you do? Refer them. 
Okay. When I sit down and I have a conversation with someone and I say, you know what, now that we've had a few minutes to chat, there's an agent in our office that would be a perfectly good fit for you. And I know you have lots of different industries listening, but I keep going back to real estate because it's a good example. And you know what, you're probably going to lose them anyway. And a percentage of something is better than 100% of nothing. So don't be afraid to say, you know what, now that we've had a chance to talk, you know, I care enough about providing you good service. And there's another realtor in our office that would be an excellent fit for you. Let me make that introduction. Yeah. Don't feel like you have to work with every personality because sometimes that's the case, Toby, where there's one that we, we, we just can't do that letter and that's okay. Mm -hmm. You know, and maybe there's some growth needed on your part, but until then, don't be a disservice to your customer, provide the best possible service. And if that person's not you be willing to admit that it's not you and get them in the hands of someone who can provide the best possible experience for them. For them, right. And and and, and that's great, right? And the, the, the ethically, right, that's the 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 correct stance. Um um but but I for me it's like more for me because like I, I'm the guy losing <laughs> sleep over it, right? They they're probably not because I'm, you know, they're getting me being patient and answering them over and over again and I'm the one like ha like eating my breakfast like dreading the phone call that, that I know's coming. It's an unscheduled phone call, of course. These people kind of work like that in, in my life. Or they said it Okay, yes, finding people you do not want to work with is super important. L let me this is kind of, this is this is something maybe a weird question, but we, we have to start wrapping up. Thanks for you for your time so far, but is there is there any sort of um combination whether it's a D or C or an S that you mentioned ethics ethics, right? Like or is one personality type more generally more ethical than another or is there no correlation between that's kind of a loaded question. So you have to understand the difference between personality and character. Okay. Oh. So in other words, any personality can be a bank robber because that's based on your morals, your ethics, your belief. Now, the way that you would commit the crime would be based on your personality. And I can look at a crime scene and tell you what personality did that, which is pretty scary to most people, but it's reality. The eyes are the easiest to catch. They're chewing gum. They throw it at the scene. We got their you know, dental prints in their DNA. And so, uh, you know, so there's different ones. Now, there are some that are more innately to do the right thing, I would say. And those would be an S or a C. But I don't want you to misconstrue that to say, oh, well, that means D's and I's are unethical. It doesn't work that way. C's can be horrible people and they right. will plan it out and right. you'll probably yes. never catch them. <laughs> right. And so it goes back to the character, right? And <laughs> yeah. so, it's my belief that any of them can make good choices or bad choices, and it really doesn't have to do with their personality. The way they display it, the way you display jealousy, the way you display anger, the way you display uh, uh, fear are all based on your personality type. This is just one more reason why everybody needs to know it. Okay. Absolutely. Um, so, so we, again, we have to wrap up. Let me. I don't ask everybody this question, and this is another one of those loaded ones, and you can take it or not take it, but... We've talked about a lot, and I, and I think we've covered a good. Like we've, this has been a really interesting interview for me. But is there something I should have asked you that I didn't ask you? You know, there's just we could do this for hours. I'm there's sure. just so so much value added in this. But the the one thing I want to stress is that it's so important to understand this and to have an appreciation for other people. We don't think and feel and act the same. And that's the way that it should be because it adds so much more value to the big picture to be able to see different perspectives and to be open to that. And there's one thing I just wanted to share with you, and this will take a minute, but I want you to understand that personalities are different depending on whether they're under control or out of control. OK, and that's another value added by by knowing when you're hitting those out of control things. So, you know, I'll just give you a few examples yeah, for each personality type. So for a D, for example, under control, they can be courageous, out of control, they're reckless, mm -hmm. under control, they're quick to respond, but out of control, they can be rude, yes. under control, they're goal oriented, but out of control, they can be impatient. OK, yeah. and I could go on and on. Here's the eyes okay. under control. They're optimistic, out of control. They're unrealistic mm. under control. They're persuasive, out of control. They're manipulative. If you ever met a manipulating person, probably an out of control eye under control. They're excited, out of control. They can be emotional. You ever met a drama queen? Probably yeah. an eye personality. <laughs> Right. And so uh, let's go to the S's. I'm trying to find it real quick for you. Yeah. Under control, they're relaxed. Out of control, they lack initiative. 
under control, they're reliable, out of control, they're dependent, too dependent on others. Here's a cool one. Under control, they're cooperative, out of control, they let other people take advantage of them. They become a sucker. So important. Uh, C's under control, orderly, out of control, compulsive. You ever met someone with OCD? Probably a C personality. Under control, logical, out of control, they're critical. Under control, intense, but out of control, unsociable. And we have a whole list of that kind of stuff. All that's in my book, but it just gives you an example of how personalities are different depending on where they're operating from. Are they coming from those under control traits or are they leaning towards those out of control traits? Yeah. And, and how much of your book, um, it, it, you know, because I, I – I think, I think, you know, I'm, I'm good at this like you are, but, you know, my wife, right, still baffles me. Um, I, I, I sometimes don't have her number. Like, is there, is there a section in the book where you talk about relationships? I know you mentioned it a little bit earlier, but like, is it like in what kind of, oh, go. <laughs> There's a little bit scattered in there, Toby, but I have an awesome super... audio product on my website called okay. Couples Communication 101 that's about 45 minutes long that really gives you a, a cool look at personalities because we tend to marry someone who's at least partially opposite of ourselves and then we expect them to think and feel and act like us and it doesn't work that way. So it really has some good insights on there and kind of a funny uh, perspective. So that's yeah. what I would recommend for that. No, that's that, that's great. Like, And again, thanks, thanks so much for coming on um what's next for you i'm curious well, like w- w- like you're, you're gonna you're gonna d- go you're gonna promote the book it's gonna sell that what's next on your horizon you know i i have uh, another i have 11 books I've written so far. So I'm pretty much done with writing for a little bit. So just in the process of, you know, cr- um, creating more vul- virtual products now with the world that we live in now okay. and, uh, you know, some upcoming speaking engagements, private, all my engagements are private. So no one can just come in off the streets and come to them. But if anyone's interested in having something like that, I'd love for them to reach out to me. We can do it either virtually or we can do it in person, you know, when the time allows for that. Sure. And, 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 and where can people go? Where can people find more about you like yeah what's your so my handle? my email is personality pro at msn.com and my website is personality profiles.org if you go to youtube and type in my name angel tucker profiler you'll see many of my tv interviews and and lots of other great stuff on there as well hey angel thank you so much for coming on it's been it's been fantastic talking with you my pleasure toby thanks for having me on you, the show you got it bye bye let's go Concentrated